Welcome to Rockcast. Dire Sin Production. Let's rock it. Let's rock it. Let's rock it. Let's rock it. <laughs> what's up my dude what's up uh, you sound good of course already this is why i like doing it with guys that uh that's uh, phrasing boom that uh hashtag that's cool though uh that have uh no sound and and how to project their voices and frame oh nice backdrop east coast yeah. man east fucking coast <laughs> i know it's crazy I it's bet fucking it crazy i bet it really no, it's, is it's awesome, so much fun too. though yeah, that's yeah, it. No, you it's know? uh Oh, there you are. Now I got you. There you are. Man, you're looking good. Look at oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, crack cocaine, man. I'm telling you, it's people people dog on it, but as long as you smoke people... it with the baking soda and not the pneumonia. Yeah. No. Nah. Uh, okay, being yeah, a creative that's the person. Way. I guess. But <laughs> not the way. like now just being only in your creative aspect makes it almost kind of harder to create. Because, you know, like you don't have any outside st- stimulation, which, believe it or not, going to a job, as much as you love it or hate it, is something else. That's where, you know, you're out there and about and you're looking forward to getting home or you have an idea and you write it down. And you're like, your whole day is, but when you're just there, like I get up, I'm like, I've got a studio, I've got, I've got instruments, I've got amps, I, I got video, I could do all this shit, a thousand podcasts. Then I'm like, just sit in my chair and smoke weed and play my Xbox 360. <laughs> Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, the motivation is moot sometimes. Even it's this. hard to find it. It's hard to find it, man. It's uh, it, just like you said, without the outside stimulation, you have to generate it yourself. And it, it can be difficult. It can be difficult. I have learned, though, throughout this whole process that um, to not be so hard on myself when I'm not feeling inspired, when I'm not feeling creative, and that um, the end result isn't where the joy lies it's the actual process you know yeah, like no. just like just like a lot of um <clears throat> you know visual artists will will stare at their canvas for hours and hours and hours and do nothing and then and they're developing these images and then finally you know it could be days weeks or months later they just put it all down and i look at it that way with music as well it's just like i could just be sitting and sitting there doing nothing staring at the fucking wall staring at a some uh, mindless movie or tv show and then all of a sudden boom I'm, I'm just creating and i don't even know where or why but yeah, uh, to a, not be so hard on myself you know you're definitely a uh, very creative i mean you're a musician you you cover lots of different things you're a hell of a front man too and uh a performer but yeah no i like how you said canvas because that's how as just mostly a, a lyricist in a in the bands usually uh i've always rushed it and in this last band because of the COVID thing and the whole like what's your hurry bruh uh i've just let them put together the songs i went to every practice and and i don't drink so i'm not jumping around being a douchebag i'm I'm like i'm fucking sitting there and i watched the band develop and like you said i stared at i stared at the canvas (laughs) and now in the last three days i finally got all three songs done they're ready to go i'm just adding the lyrics to it writing it listening to it and then with the studio i can actually Lay down my own vocal tracks. I'm not waiting to go to practice before I can yell into a mic like an uncontrolled yeah. moron. I'm just putting them down. I'm breathing. I know I'm. Uh, there's this thing. I guess uh, you may have heard of this. It's called being on key. I don't know. It, it might be. <laughs> I, I don't know. But uh, 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 apparently, even in fucking metal, you want to be on key with the other musicians. Uh, yeah, I mean, it helps. I'm excited to, to I mean, and blah, 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 the quitting jerky thing, whatever, but the, the, I'm excited about being present in the moment on stage for the first time ever. But I don't want to gloss over that you quit drinking, though, at the same time, because I think that's that's quite uh, an achievement. Uh, because as somebody who, who drinks consistently, um, I, I know that at some point in my future, if that's uh, one of the other things that I'm going to probably drop, you know, it's going to happen. I can feel it happening. I'm just like kind of not really weaning myself off, but I've definitely been taking it a lot slower. I mean, there are some binge worthy times in these last couple of years and especially this year, but I've noticed lately, I'm just like, you know what? I can go 
days, a couple of weeks, you know, whatever. I'm just like, yeah, save it for an occasion, save it for when, for when it, uh, it actually is going to, uh, I don't know, accomplish some kind of joy or, or whatever. And that was it with me. It was just, it was no more, it was just, it just, the, the bad feeling outweighed the good. And with everything else I lost, I was at rock bottom and I was like, do I want to start at rock bottom using the same exact fucking staircase or maybe try yeah. something new and exciting and deal with every fucking second. But I picked the wrong year though, the wrong year to quit drinking, bro. It was, it yeah. was rough, but now it's, like that, I can't think of. I've lost three friends. I've, I've, I don't think, I don't, I can't think of anything that would break me. Maybe my mom even dying, but that would disappoint her more than anything. So I, I'm free yeah. of it. But you become an immediate yeah. hypocrite. That kind of sucks. You don't mean to be, but you're just like, your friend falls down because they're drunk and breaks their ankle. You're like, I mean, come on, come on. Meanwhile, I'm the guy that's had to have six security guards wrestle him down because he started a fight with a table, uh, you know, and shit. So yeah. it, it's hard to. Yeah, no, and I get that. And I, again, you know, I kind of go back to this whole, you know, taking it easy on ourselves and, and taking it easy on myself. It's like, you know, we have to allow ourselves to evolve and change. It's like, yeah, I was one way, even just a couple of years ago or a few years ago, and now I'm not that way. You know, it's like, that doesn't make me a hypocrite. If no, I ha change my perspective or evolve into a new perspective, uh, see, I don't is, think so. You're another one. I think it's a hypocrite if you're like saying some shit and still doing some other shit. Like currently, then you're a fucking hypocrite. Yeah, right. No, you know, if you've completely uh -oh. if you've completely changed your ways jerky, and jerky. done a 180 or whatever, then then nah, I, I don't know if it's hypocrisy. I was stuck so long in one form <clears throat> that it became a, a joke of itself in a way. Like we are evolutionary creatures, just by our nature. Like, and that's not, and it's, and we always seem to think like long-term, like I'm going to plan my diet out, but we're really, really, really micro. I mean, we live in, we see time. Okay. Hold on. I'm trying to sound smart because I'm talking to you. Hold on. I'm going to edit all that man. out. So, but, no, no, <laughs> but, but, oh, I have the power of a God here, man. And then I forgot squirrel brain and there it goes. We are meant to evolve. And what I learned when I left Alaska after 38 years of living in one space. So you came to Alaska because you had been places and lived life. You had influences. I am up until the last eight years, I, I am an Alaskan, which means I had one point of view and only two and a half months to share them with people before it got cold again. And my whole life yeah. was like that. Yeah. When I got down here, dude, a uh, uh, weight of, uh, I always tell people, I ain't no redneck, man, but I'm a North neck. This is frostbite. <laughs> and the way, you know, and the yeah. way that I grew up in that, that state, I didn't realize it till I left. And then it was just, it was cool. And then you go back there again, like a hypocrite and be like, well, you shouldn't say that about people. They're like, motherfucker, you used to say that about people. And I said, well, yeah. I did, but yeah. I realized it and I've decided to make changes and God damn it. I'm allowed to fucking do that if I truly 100%. believe it. Yeah. Yes. 100%. Definitely. No, it's great. And I, I just, you know, that's kind of been my whole um, philosophy throughout my pretty much my entire life. I've lived in a bunch of different places. And I know that by doing that, by putting myself in these new environments and these uncomfortable situations that I'm going to find out something about myself by finding out this, what's what else is out there, you know, and, um, you know, and actually like moving to Alaska, that was that was, you know, like most things, very spontaneous. It was very unexpected. But when I remember, like, landing and going, okay, like, like landing, it, like, and I'm like, okay, this this actually looks like just small town American. I've been in a bunch of small towns. And it's just like, I get it. I, this is actually cool. I'm, like, surprised. But then when I, like, got into uh, – the city, you know, just the town and living with the people. It's like this is actually a really diverse area. It I was is. surprised, pleasantly surprised, like how diverse it is. Like, yeah, there's a bunch of backwood, backroads people there, definitely because you're way fucking deep in there, and I get that. Yeah, those but guys, but they choose the, to be out there too. That's sure, why you know, they go I, there. And have, yeah, and I have nothing against you know them as people, uh, even if our beliefs are different. But at the same time, there are still there is still like a whole there's many groups of different ideals and I was pleasantly surprised by that. And I think that's one of the reasons why I fell in love with, you with know what? Alaska, that's a trip. Sure. That's a, maybe as an insider, I didn't see it that way because when I went out with horror, it was magnifying. I thought, yeah, I remember the first time I went back was during the transgender bathroom convos and I'm sitting at my favorite bar that I've been going to for 20 years of my goddamn life. And all the people around me were like, oh, they shouldn't be able to do that and everything else. New uh, new snowflake liberal dude over here. Uh, you guys shouldn't <laughs> talk like that. That's not right. You're hurting people's feelings. 
Yeah. You see, but you're yeah. coming from well, the outside and you're like, though, dude, when there was, and I still think there's always a music scene, but it was in a peak at that time, man. And like, there was even the shows, there was not just a metal show or a punk rock show, there were shows. That's what I'm saying. I, yeah. I was like, uh, yeah, there was like, there was hip hop, there was rap, there was fucking bluegrass, there was metal. There that was, was just I was ATF. Going to, I was going to see, I was going to see, uh, you know, Motown live. You know, I was just like, there is so much shit here uh, that I was just like, damn, this is really, really. Um, I think, uh, I think you stumbled. I don't on. know. It was just I think really it's an Alaska cool. thing. I think yeah, I think I loved that's, it. I that's still... a necessity. It's like you have to have yeah. cases of shit brought out to the villages because you're going to run out of it. In Alaska, you got little <laughs> pockets of everything, and you got to have a. I don't know. I, I loved it. I miss it so much for that. Me too, man. But Me too. When I, the minute I saw, like infrastructure and transportation and so many different kinds of trees, man. There's so many different kinds of trees down here. I didn't know I was a tree hugger <laughs> till I came down here, man. And there are just so many different kinds yeah. of trees. And uh, Yo, Washington's beautiful. It yeah. is. It is. I feel like I kind of like took a baby step. Like I kind of stepped out of Alaska. I could have been a little braver. Maybe had a little more Midwest. Maybe a little more East Coast. Not to say that I won't. Uh, yeah. But who knows? I it's still when we're in the heat of conversation, especially if we've been drinking. Brendan, Brendan, like, Brendan. I'm just like, sh like I don't even, I don't even bother. It's like whatever. Just man. used to it. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, man. Well, this is gonna be a start. By the way, this isn't a cigarette. These are these joy, uh, joysticks. It's a CBD, basically cigarette. It's like the old pyramid. It's got the little hole in it. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. It tastes like shit though. I gave him a list. Yeah. I tallied it up and. Sure. Yeah, they may. I just try it. I don't know. Anyways, dude, as much as I love doing this, I feel like a fuck. You know what imposter syndrome is? Oh, yeah, 100%. I guarantee you yeah. do. Being yeah. an artist I sucks, absolutely bro. Absolutely. 100% know what imposter I mean, I, I feel it. I don't know. Every single time I try to create something, who the fuck am I? What the fuck do I know? And I'm just uh, making little bleeps and blorp sounds, you know? Yeah, bleeps and blorp um, sounds. You're a fucking genius, bro. <laughs> you really are yes. dude like you're one of the ones that came into alaska and brightened it up and then skedaddled out of alaska but the, well i'm like i left and then but like you going sarah going a couple other big key people leaving there yeah and then, Corey, Corey left and yeah yeah yeah, yeah absolutely but i know it was weird i guess i mean i don't even know i mean i didn't i didn't leave alaska because i don't love alaska i didn't leave no. anchorage because i i was just like tired of anchorage i just had an opportunity to come live in a place where i've always wanted to live and so i took the opportunity and uh, but i i miss anchorage so much like so much that i'm actually planning on spending some time there because i'm moving to norway i mean i think everybody is aware of that right like i'm i'm marrying a norwegian woman and uh it'll be a lot easier for me to move to Norway than it will be for her to move to the, to America. Yeah. yeah. So who would want to move to a, America right now? Hey, you know, I mean, it's, <laughs> I, it's, it's, don't get me, don't get me started, yeah, but no. I'm just saying that, you know, I, mm. as I love adventure and I love new experiences. So I'm moving to Norway, but that's going to take a process. That's a whole process. So during this process, I'm going to uh, spend some time in Anchorage. So, cause if I'm leaving the country, I want to spend it uh, with the people that that means so much to me, and Absolutely. you know, and it'll give me some time to like, you know, even like go to Oregon and be with my family for a little bit too. But um, yeah, I I miss that place like wholeheartedly. What a trip. Well, now yeah. these uh, <clears throat> well, I I think the first question's gonna be pretty easy for you then there, my friend, because uh, that's kind of like. It sounds like you're doing exactly that. But let's get the question out of the way so we can hear that. And by the way. <clears throat> what a <clears throat> fairy tale as a metalhead let me say uh, totally <laughs> like holy shit you know i mean dude you just went yeah. down you did the little phone thing and the bad da, 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 in norway and and wow man fairy tale shit well, right there the one thing i love honestly like out of all of it and yeah we've been able to do the thing with facetime and, and all that stuff but it's just how we met we're both musicians we met doing the thing that we both love doing in the most random in fucking crown heights brooklyn i mean i know you don't really know that much around the area but it's just like a really obscure kind of out of out of the way part of brooklyn 
Is that where like, you are? You're like, in Brooklyn? Yeah, I'm in Brooklyn. I'm in Williamsburg. And I had to go to Crown Heights for this this uh, this open mic thing and that I didn't even really want to go to. But I was just like getting over a breakup, uh, just sulking for a few months. And then I was like, you know what? Get up. You were invited. Go do something. And so I grabbed my guitar. Or I didn't even grab my guitar. I just grabbed my shit, like my, my stuff that I was to perform. Uh, and... Um, and that's where I met her. And she wasn't even, she was like there kind of like haphazardly. She's from fucking Norway. She was like here in New York doing an EP, you know, and just kind oh, of hanging cool. on. She just ended up at this fucking open mic. And so we were both like just this there doing the thing that we love for no real reason. And that's where we met, you know, and then. That's awesome, dude. And then the, you know, and then, and then the rest is history. But uh, I, I, I think I love that the most because I've, I've never been with a, a musician i've never dated uh another performer you know like it's somebody to, that i could collaborate with and but also like respect as a musician as an artist also like, understands I've never it. Understands, and understands yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The, the there's so, a lot of sacrifice that kills a lot of relationships because what do you mean you're playing on this night or what do you mean you're having a show on that night or why would you want to play on this day it's like those are those are that's what we do man yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can't fault her for any of her decisions as as an artist or anything really. But um, that's awesome. yeah. So I think in, anything more than than that, I just love the meeting. But um, as yeah, far as the story. questions, I love the questions as as um, uh, as as pedestrian as they could be from you know an internet search. I actually had to think about this, and it's like I would love to say that. Um, you know, my passion gets me out of bed. But I got to be honest with you, it it doesn't. It's like the most mundane, uh, monotonous, redundant shit that actually gets me out of bed. Okay. Because okay. that passion, that passion is, it's there all the time. It's like, it's not like a thing that I think of to, or I'm consciously like deciding upon but it's just there and and yeah it's a guiding light but it's not the thing that I wake up and go oh I'm a, an artist or a, or a wannabe artist even and, and I'm gonna get out of bed because I love doing that it's like honestly like I get out of bed every day because for many many different reasons but they're usually pretty fucking boring it's like I, I got to get up and pay the bills yeah. You know, nobody's take nobody's taking care of me. I'm taking care of myself. I, I, uh, I got to get up because I don't want to be a fat ass. You know, like I don't want to have muscles atrophy. I don't want to have bed sores. I don't want to, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't want I don't want my woman looking at me going, "What a lazy fuck! Why am I with that dude?" You know, I, I get out of bed for the most mundane, monotonous bullshit uh, over anything. Honestly, like I had to really think about that because. I don't consciously think of my passion. Yeah. It's just, it's just there. And it's always going to be there whether I'm lying in bed or I'm, you know, actively pursuing it. You know, it's, it's who not you something are. that I'm like, it's, yeah, it's not, I'm not, like, I don't, I, I can't, I don't think of it that way. You know, it's just, uh, and I, I used to though, when I was, but I felt like when I did, when I was younger, I was just so gung ho about my fucking, yeah music and, and expression i was like this is my being this is my reason for living and it's like nah, not anymore it's like now it's just like it's not my reason for living but i'm alive and this is what i do you know so you know i had reason... to let that go too man i i for well for me it was destructive because i was like i'm a lead singer of a metal band i do drugs and i drink <laughs> and i yeah this is who i am and, this uh, is who i am i forgot yeah, to look yeah. around and be like yeah you're that in anchorage alaska bro you need to chill the fuck out okay you're uh <laughs> like my ego brother was huge no that's a good point bro, and that's that's cool mine too. musicians there seems to be a common thread with the with the well with artists well let's just say artists you know what we we understand the umbrella art falls under i think most yeah yeah and and i i try not to be you know uh pretentious about it you know i'm just but yeah that's an art that's an art yeah no, you're a fucking honest. artist bro and you're a fucking musician and you were you know what knowing you though but you were involved you were you were one of the ones that was always at the uh let's talk to sarah the collaborative minds and i they need to start that shit back up there immediately i keep telling enzo enzo you're the new leader man 
fucking take the town and push. Yeah, there's lots of lots of Chris Barton's going off again on all sorts of stuff, and uh, that 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 state surges. It's weird, but I'm excited for a lot. Yeah, it like fluctuates, right? Yeah. Fluctuates. I think I think this year is going to be a huge surge, though. I think they they I think there's a lot of musicians right now waiting to come out that just learned how to play the guitar and drums over the last year. <clears throat> they need yeah, it. They're itching. They're itching. Yeah, but yeah, all the musicians, man, like. And that is a weird point. I would like, when you said that, I was like, yeah, I'd like to think of myself as that's who I am. But now that I've kind of backed off that, I'm like, it's okay to do other things and maybe even change your image a little bit. I'm not going full Metallica fucking black to fucking load, okay? I'm not I'm not doing that. <laughs> but I sometimes I wear a green yeah. shirt. Sometimes I'll wear, uh, you know, I, like, I got an orange hat now. Check it out. I got this orange yeah. hat. Yeah. You know, I'm not yeah. all rot. I'm still rot. Yeah. But, I, I have killed off Dennis. I've killed off that guy. I, I didn't like him and what he cost me. If I decide to raise Rottweilers or something, I'm covered. Um, I've got, you know, I've got, I've got my, my base. Or work for a, or work for a mortuary. Yeah, and you know? boobs, boobs, I believe is is installing himself as a future uh, hobo gym. Um, I believe he's going to be there forever, and uh, he's just he's gonna he is gonna be the ghost of yeah he's he's boobs man. He's such a classic dude. Uh, I have uh, the utmost respect for him. And he, he's got such a great um, inner energy. That, it's crazy. You know, it, it's it's wonderful, actually. He's yeah. just a born, just a fucking born entertainer. Like, whether he's talking yeah. or singing. Yeah, sweet guy. He's just like, oh, yeah. And, and he's, he's funny like, as fuck. And that's a thing. Of, funny I mean, as, like, hell, as much man. as a musician as he is, I feel he's equal part stand-up comedian. He could slay it. We'll talk about him. Whatever. He's Here's the thing I wanted to say, though, because you, you actually have dabbled in the stand-up comedy as well. That's and, mostly um, what I do now. Uh, yeah, honestly. and I've been like listening to – all I do is listen to podcasts now. I, I listen to 80% podcasts, 20% music these days. And a lot of uh, comedians, a lot of comedy podcasts, and I've grown a great deal of respect for what it is that a comedian has to do to be successful or even to just be entertaining. And it's like, uh, that that's a even more vulnerable than being a front man, in my opinion. A thousand times. You know? I thought, but because of that, once again, cocky. Hey, you're funny. I know I'm funny, motherfuckers. I make everybody laugh around me all the time. <laughs> Hand me a but microphone. Are you doing bits? Like you oh, yeah. Oh, no, dude. I've got, I've got... Total, I've done probably 15 live shows. I've hosted a couple now. Um, I'm working with the main guy. and Right. right. So, no, I want to do improv, uh, maybe. I like the idea of improv. It's more making it up as you go with the premise. You know, that's why I started yeah, saying the yeah. questions out in advance. I could just bring the questions on you during the interview, but then you have to think about it there. And it's and sure. giving it to you yeah. in advance gives you, you know what it is, but who knows where it's going to go when you actually talk about it. So it leaves 100%. that, yeah. you know, that, that yeah. openness. But with the, because I thought improv was just like, they just go out there and make shit up. It's like, oh, no, they talk about it at first. There's like, there's some premises, some some canvas, if you will, throwback, drawback. Sure. Uh, sure. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. then you could bounce your ideas off that. Your brain already has somewhere to land. Now you just have to yeah. create into it, which is. Well, fucking... some of these like improv guys and, and, and women, they're just so brilliant they, they like even though they have a premise you know they could still like veer off into you know something that that, that wasn't discussed at the head of time and i do love it you know when they are just like they don't have a premise and they're like give me a, a situation you know give me a you know they're yelling out in the crowd the crowd's yelling out things and and then you could tell like the brilliance of, of some of these people that that are just like man i it's almost like a uh, like a like a, a rap artist a hip-hop artist that could just Freestyle. Flow at the top. Yeah. They just freestyle. I'm like, that's such I can't I can't do that. I have to write it out. You know what I mean? And it's just a, a another level of of uh, wordsmithing that I'm just you know, I'm not a part of, so I respect it one hundred percent. Yeah, the uh yeah. Yeah, the uh, comedy, I can't bring myself to Spinal Tap or uh, anything, though. I cannot make myself <laughs> I take metal like this new band, my guitar player is a goofball. I'm like uh, what's the name of this song? And he's like, coming inside her. I'm like, okay, we're going to write this about yeah. like turning into a different kind of person and the growth <laughs> of a human spirit. He's like, no, no, no. It's literally about coming inside someone. And I'm like, Jeff, I'm not going to make funny songs. I'll be funny between the songs. They, they allow that. And they're cool with that. 
But uh, God damn it, my this is my music. This is serious. I write serious. Like right now, these songs, I tried so hard. I was like, I'm not going to focus on the last two years or four years. I gave it six years. I'm like, I'm going to pretend that didn't happen. I don't want to write any political songs about the state of the nation. The minute after sitting there for four months watching them build the songs, dude, bloom. Uh, the, 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 they're all the two of the songs out of the three are political, and the other one's about me. I'm trying to keep it in my head, but. They're definitely political about just calling the nation out on it. Just fucking shut up, yeah. you know? And I yeah. think I say America yeah. twice in the lines. I have to take that out so I don't sound too much random fucking lie. <laughs> All right. We're getting to, I'm getting I excited. love comedy. I love comedy and music, though. I, I come from, a, or I come from, but I, I, I've been influenced by bands like, you know, Primus, mm. Mr. Bungle, you know, Ween. Mr. You know, Bungle's just like, shit. right? I mean, but there's a lot of silliness in their music and i i really dig that um you know even with shifter i would purposely be kind of um i would be silly like uh, the song monkey dance it, it was definitely like a kind of like a joke for me because if if the song caught on and people were like singing the lyrics i'm laughing because the lyrics are like about something super perverted yeah and super like you know what i mean it, it's just like funny for me and uh, but um to to to, to pull it off it, it's uh, it, it's definitely um, a skill or even an art form to just be like, yeah, I don't know this why song is badass. It's like this song is badass and you're going and you're going and you don't realize like what the silliness about. behind what it is, what it's about, you know? And I, I, I get that from a lot of the influences as a kid and doing a lot of acid. So, doing a lot um, of acid. Yeah. <laughs> and just be a fucking, yeah, silliness. So, um, but that second question, what was the second question? Give me one second. That's a perfect segment. I'm going to... It's still... All right, beautiful. Well, Brandon, let me do my little... Yeah. Brandon, son of a bitch, and three, two, one. Well, Brandon, <laughs> it's actually on my screen here in beautiful big letters. It spells it perfectly normal, and right? I even looked it up when well, I did it. Yeah. It's been so good to talk to people I love. Uh, I've got Brock is going to do one. Enzo even. Oh, nice. He didn't yeah. say he would do one, but Enzo's only complimented me three times in the fucking almost 20 years I've known him. The first time was for the <laughs> line uh, in a Murder is Justice song I wrote called The Enemy of My Enemy is My Only Friend, Terrified to Find Out the Enemy Lives Within. To me, it was a song about crack cocaine addiction, but he didn't need to know that. And he thought, that, dude, that's the coolest <laughs> line ever. And then the second time was I didn't drink for a show, uh, and it was right before they fired me. And he came up to me, he's like, that's the best fucking job you've ever done. And then he got me fair play, fair play. So, and then that time he was like, he watched the, uh, I believe it was the boobs interview. Oh no, Ryan Hall, of course. I had Ryan Hall on there and he watched that and he, he's like, it's pretty good, man. Pretty good job. I'm like, holy shit from Enzo. <laughs> Fuck yeah. You want to be on it? Yeah. He's not, he's not, he's not uh, loose with the compliments. No, he no. Not, he's no, be he's, honest he's though. Of... He'd be honest. Oh, dude. Yeah, you, never, definitely, he, you know where you stand with that dude. There's a there's a fight between uh you know life. Is it is it is it chaos? Are we in control? Are we pathetic and think we're in control? These are all better questions than the one that I was going to ask you, which is at what degree have you actually controlled the course of life that and the and the way it's taken? I said that wrong. Then two, what degree have you actually controlled the course your life has taken? I would have to say none. I have no control. I um here you know I actually thought I thought about this a lot and it kind of ties in with the first question too. So, I'm going to give a, a little anecdote. I had a uh, thought at one time that I wanted to be a bartender. Right? Like I people would tell me like, "Hey, you'd be a great bartender. You, you know, you're outgoing and you like to listen and you you hustle when you work this and that all bartender necessities and so i went to a bartending school in alaska and um learned all the things and i got a bartending job and that's so yeah it it turns out that i don't want to be a bartender i got behind there and i did the thing and i hustled and and whatnot and it just it it didn't feel the way that i thought it was going to feel you know, and it may have been the, you know, the bar or the area or the customers. I don't know. I don't really think. Did you want it to be because... cocktail? <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? I mean, Come on, man. Me and that dude are about the same height. You know, yeah, yeah. Like I, I got good, you know, hand-eye coordination. No, but uh, I, I just realized that this is not the side of the bar that I want to be on. And I realized that um, a, a couple of months in, 
and so when I, but now here I am making pizzas for money and, and cooking for money. And that wasn't something that I had thought I was going to do. I wouldn't, I just kind of like fell into it. I, I, I just, it became like I got into it uh, through other skills and then realized that this was something that I could do very easily. It was something that I actually enjoyed as I was well, doing it. I found, a, found it, a lot of joy. You this know? was when you moved to New York, right? Or to the East? Was that when you first started? No, I was. No, no, no. I, I started making. Are you I, mean, I started tooth? cooking. I, I, yeah. Well, I worked for Beartooth. Beartooth, but, um, Beartooth. Okay. I started making pizzas even before then. I worked for Uncle Joe's. Um, and, uh, but I was cooking before that. I was cooking in a war game, too. I was going to say, because you're a musician, one. And, and all musicians yeah. know how to fucking cook. If not, I don't know where you're going to make money. I mean, honestly, we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, was... actually, for even before cooking, I was uh, I was a salesman. I was like, I worked for a guitar center uh, in Oregon. I worked for Skip's Music in California. Yeah, I worked for, like you, you know, a couple. So, you know, and I sold a bunch of shit. I worked for AT&T. You know, so I, I was a salesman. And I've been a musician since I was fucking, you know, what, 13. So... You know, I did a bunch of different things, but my point is, is that uh, the control over the direction of my life, I've never really had in retrospect. It's always been some type of some outside influence, some change of perspective that by circumstance, some something that just like came along like a big gust of wind. I was like, wait, I could do that. Like, I don't have any control over those outside influences or even when a new perspective arises i don't because you don't consciously think okay i'm going to start thinking about this now yeah you know or i'm going to change my perspective to this now that's not how it works it's it's just influence yeah. happens yeah influence circumstance experience or whatever so in 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 every in retrospect i'm not quite sure i have i mean any control over any of this you know i didn't have control over when uh when julian was born but i changed my life to 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 give my all for that and i didn't i didn't have any uh control over whether i could be in his life i didn't have any control over that so i dealt with that and how i could i didn't have any you know control over this pandemic i was like on my way to do a whole new profession i'd like started doing something that i i was like oh let's do some something that i think is kind of like out of whack, out of my box, uh, that seems like it's kind of fun. I like doing different things. How about this cosmetology shit? And I was into yeah, it. Okay, now that was, was another well. one. I was doing well. I was kicking ass. You're... Student of the month. Yeah, you I, know, I, I, all I, I, this shit. Yeah. Well, the fucking pandemic hit. Closed shit down. Now they want me to do it online. Now they want me to, you know, do this and this back and forth shit. And they didn't, they were prepared to deal with that. So it was, became this clusterfuck. And so I wasn't learning anything anymore. Yeah. And What's the point? it became more like this, this push to just get me through the hours that were required and, uh, and just give me the certificate of completion. And I'm like, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here for the experience. I'm here for the education, not to get some fucking piece of paper. You know, this isn't my livelihood. I just wanted to learn something. So the whole pandemic and shutting down of New York was changed that meeting mary that changed it i didn't plan on meeting her you know what i mean so i don't know if i've had any control over anything ever i've basically just you seem to let, make good decisions um, though you seem to go with with a lot of instinct and hey let's fucking try that which i personally being stuck in one state for 38 years of my life ignored those when they came by a and r showcase ignore it you know all these all these big opportunities that i could have had that i was like no i'm an alaskan i stay in alaska <laughs> yeah. I've been yeah. opportunities are right, and that, that's a good point. <laughs> I think we want to think we're in control, man, but you're not. But you do no. make you I mean, do you make good like decisions. Things. Yeah, well, I'm a I, I'm a survivor, that's for sure. I definitely know how to survive, and I definitely like try to uh, put out good as much as I can into the world. Even though I've made a lot of shitty mistakes and and been kind of a dick, you know, in the past, but uh, it ultimately. I feel like, uh, actually, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. To sometimes my detriment, I'm a yes dude. I say yes to a lot of shit. 
like sometimes to my detriment like yeah. it's like <laughs> hey man take this yeah what did i just take you know what i mean it's like the after you know what i mean it's like hey do you want to go here yeah let's fucking go you know hey uh, hey do you want to experience this yes let's do it and you know sometimes like just flying off you know and doing things has been great and it's worked yeah. out because I, I know how to work. I can take care of myself. But at some times, it's also been really, really fucked up. And yeah, hurt a lot of people's fucked feelings. Up, yeah, but those <laughs> fucked up times, too, yeah. man. I do. I look at that, yeah. too. You got to fuck up in life. and But you yeah. live. You got to learn mean, from it. And exper experiences are what it is. And when you're young, you got the energy to make the fuck ups. Now we're getting older. Yeah. You, of course, you're like, I don't need to do that. And they edge. It's not that they... I still want to be a lead front man. That's why I'm going to practice once a week and jumping around. Uh, well, what's cool is that you haven't lost your edge, Dennis. You, you have not lost your edge. You're a hard motherfucker. You're raw, and that's what you got to do to. I'm trying to, to be a really, little softer. Um, can I be honest? At 47, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 your your admission to to appreciating faith no more and Mike Patton. Uh, I was like, all right, yeah, he's lightening up. He's lightening well, up. Well, hey, bit. I've always yeah. loved. I used to be a nasal singer first, so my bands that I really loved, like I could, I could Mike Patton, uh, uh, epic, like any of that album, any of them. That was my favorite album they ever put out. I don't care what anybody says. I know I'm a monster for saying it, but it's the one that got Whatever my dopamine. Want, it's the one that hooked me. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, we lost him. Uh, we're gonna try that again. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening. This, this is been a Dynasty Production. The Olympic Division's are all on the phone. Stay insane. This is a metal. This is a metal. This is a metal. This is a metal. You're free. Hurrah! You're free. And freedom is beautiful. And, uh, you know.